Now, this morning, a federal minister of agriculture and agri-food is pledging $28 million to support PEI farmers hit by a potato wart infestation. Ottawa imposed an export ban on potatoes from the island to the U.S. That was back in November due to the unsightly but harmless wart. And PEI has been fighting to end the ban. The CBC's Nick Boisvert has was watching that uh, news conference this morning. He joins us now live from Chelsea, Quebec. So, Nick, the minister promised to help. Tell us more about what we heard. Hey, Arthur. Yeah, so, so we can sort of see this this morning, I think, as some interim measures that are going to help out both PI potato farmers and perhaps appease the uh, provincial government of Prince Edward Island, who had been pushing and lobbying quite aggressively uh, for Ottawa to lift this ban. PI Premier Dennis King was in Washington just a few days ago uh, saying that uh, this was a devastating ban to the industry there. This, uh, exports are worth about $120 million, exports to the U.S., that is, uh, of PEI potatoes. So um, the government today saying they're going to help in the meantime. They didn't announce anything uh, in terms of the final resolution where they could reopen uh, exports to the U.S., but they're saying they're going to come in, assist PEI potato farmers to diversify uh, their markets, to better manage their crops. Uh, here's a little bit more from the Agriculture Minister, Marie-Claude uh, Bibo. Consumers need to know that quality has never been jeopardized. It's not being jeopardized at all here. Potato wart causes no concern to human health. This is about soil health and the U.S. authorities' concerns over the slight risk to their own country's potato yields. My message to farmers today is we are here for you. So they might have to be there for the farmers for a little while because we've heard from the Canadian Food Inspection Agency that it could take until 2023 before they fully sort out uh, this wart issue, which, as you said, Arthi, is, uh, is, doesn't look so good on the potatoes, but it's not harmful to, uh, for humans to consume, um, doesn't have sort of nutritional impact on the, on the potatoes. But we could be looking potentially into uh, you know, most of 2022 with the U.S. still being pretty concerned about these potatoes and uh, perhaps uh, some long-term relief needed for those farmers. We'll have to wait and see, uh, see if we hear anything more about that. So now, Nick, you had mentioned that the Potato Board estimated trade with the U.S. worth about $120 million. So what else is being done to help <laughs> farmers then? Yeah, so as part of this $28 million, as I said, it's going to be used not just sort of as direct uh, payments, uh, as sort of relief to farmers, but for them to try to diversify, you know, the markets that they can sell potatoes to. Uh, the agriculture minister mentioned Puerto Rico as an option, uh, obviously a, uh, a nation that's connected very closely to the U.S., but an island. So, you know, maybe we can start sending PI potatoes to Puerto Rico with a little less uh, of, a, uh, of a potential threat for infestation elsewhere in the U.S. They also want to uh, step up federal federal funding for what is essentially like an insurance program for farmers that lose out on money as a result of, of crops that uh, that suffer in various ways. So there's a few different sort of aspects of, of the way they want to go about doing this. They're trying to sort of, I think, make the uh, make the potato industry and PI a little bit more resilient, a little less reliant, perhaps, on exports to the U.S. They want to help uh, make sure that these potatoes, the ones that uh, have been harvested already, can get to food banks this year so that they don't have to be destroyed. We had heard estimates that uh, they might have to destroy 300 million pounds of potatoes. So they're trying to avoid some of those things, get them a little bit of help to make sure that, uh, that they're a little more resilient if issues like this come up again. So uh, a wide range of supports. But uh, as I said, there may well be a need for more going into next year. Arthi. All right. Thanks for watching this for us. That's the CBC's Nick Boisvert.